What's up guys and welcome back to the infamous project today's video we're going to be doing some follow up on the twin turbo coyote notchback sitting here behind me. This project has been a lengthy one. For many reasons there's lots of things that modifications and changes and everything else that needed to be done and sometimes those things just take time you want to do them right you're waiting on parts you're trying to fabricate things you want to be in a more creative mindset so on and so forth. So today I'm gonna to share with you guys a couple of the last little wrap up items on this car before hopefully it can go to the owner. So be sure to stay tuned. We're gonna be talking about the brake swap. So the ATS Brembo Taurus rear caliper, cause there's an interesting point there that I wanna share with you guys. The electric power steering out of a Volvo conversion that I did, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how I got that mounted up and everything else and I haven't tested it yet. Like I know it switches on, I know it's doing its thing, but I haven't had the car back down on the ground. So be sure to stay tuned. We'll get into the twin turbo notch. So first things first, we got bright yellow brakes here and Cadillac ATS Brembo conversion in the front that I touched on in the last video and Taurus rear calipers in the rear. Now, of course, when you swap everything from the braking system, well, you need to bleed the brakes. So a couple different occasions, pump and pedal, pump and pedal, opening the bleed screw, doing everything that you're supposed to do when you want to bleed brakes. And I could not get the rears to bleed. Uh, fluid was coming out of the bleeder screw and just there was the piston was not coming out whatsoever. So my friend Lewis said, man, well, is the proportioning valve gutted in it? And I said, you know what? That's a really good question. Everything was still hard line the way that it was when I received the car. Lo and behold, I opened it up and well, here is the inner workings of that factory proportioning valve. So when you take this stuff out, what it does is it allows full pressure to go down the main brake line that goes down the passenger side of the body here up to the T-junction above the diff. And then of course we had new brake lines that I had bent up in the rear and had everything cleaned up and good to go. But for whatever reason, no pressure. So even after gutting the proportioning valve, and I'm actually gonna show you guys a trick. If you guys don't wanna spend $20 to uh, get the little cap on the end of uh, your proportioning valve, because when you take the, the plunger out, um, it will leak. There is a little rubber grommet, and behind that rubber grommet is a hole in that plug. So here's a quick little tip, no pun intended, on how to overcome that. All right, if you guys are doing a four-wheel disc swap on your Fox Body Mustang, this proportioning valve plug needs to be changed. If you don't want to spend $20 on a plug, you can use this factory one. You notice this rubber little nipple that's usually here with a hole behind it. Drill bit, drill it out, get an 8 30 seconds tap, tap it out, get 8 30 seconds brass, make sure they're brass, screws, screw it in when you're done, and that's it. So once gutted the proportioning valve, pump and pump and pump and bleed screw, bleed screw, bleed screw, and tons of fluid coming out. Just like, what the hell is going on? Brand new Taurus calipers in the back, guys. Finally, Ricky came over. He's like, well, are those the twisting pistons in the calipers or just like the old school ones? I'm like, I don't know. So we pulled the caliper off. Sure enough, it had the two indentations on the piston 
and we put a caliper tool on it and twisted it out and all of a sudden everything started working and this happened on both sides so these calipers were brand new it was just too convenient that both calipers would have been bad out of the box and it's almost like they were twisted all the way in and locked into place maybe for new purposes so keep that in mind if you're ever dealing with a new set of calipers and that piston's not coming out when you're trying to bleed the brakes um, get a caliper tool on there you know once the pads are off and you'll be able to twist that piston outwards and hopefully that trick will work for you so of course managed to bleed the back managed to bleed the front the fronts were no problem from the beginning and got the proportioning valve gutted so now there is no additional valve so because we have the brembo ats in the front with the torus in the rear we don't need to control the amount of pressure going to the rear because the way that the calipers are configured in this case with the piston sizes we have the desired brake bias that we need between the front and the back which is a 70 percent front 30 percent rear split at least that's what youtube and everybody else tells us so gonna try it out see how it works and now once the wheels are on to showcase this guy right here so this is our volvo electric power steering pump that i got mounted in the inner frame rail here and guys i didn't need to do anything in terms of lines this was great this was the line that was going into the factory power steering pump managed to route that line over here this is going to the main reservoir tank up in the top area here that uh, fills your fluid and then of course we do have a burp line here and this burp line ultimately goes up to a t-fitting up there that shares with the hydro boost and everything else so it's going to be interesting right the power steering pump isn't just doing our steering in this case it's also doing our brake assist so I'm going to go ahead now bolt the wheels on i've changed the spark plugs i've changed the oil and done everything because the car has sort of been stagnant for a while and most importantly I drained the old E85 out of the tank. So all I did was uh, drop the line before the fuel filter and hot wired the pumps to come on and let all of the old E85 come out of the tank here. So again here, I just took this main line off going to the filter and just had a bucket underneath and drained everything out. So with fresh E85 in the tank, fresh oil, fresh spark plugs, um, everything is pretty much good to go. The car fired great right up and I let it do a heat cycle. And oh, before I forget, we were talking about AC on this car. The joys of trying to stay cool. So you can see we have our AC compressor mounted on here in the factory location now. We've got our belt on. So this is where the power steering pump was, if you guys remember correctly. And so now we have our compressor. I don't have the lines on here yet. Why? because I still need to figure out where I'm putting a condenser. So I'm hoping that I can find something that's gonna fit in between the intercooler and the radiator in the front there, and hopefully be able, hopefully it'll be able to condense enough to keep things reasonably cool in there. Um, I think I found an option. I'm just waiting to hear back on the measurements. Once I confirm the measurements, then, you know, I'll. The front bumper cover is going to have to come off again, but that's uh, that's not too bad in retrospect. If we can get this condenser to fit and work in here, then we're going to be in really good shape. The other thing too is I'm not sure if the fan that is on the radiator is going to move enough air to keep things cool. So going to have to see how that works, and if anything, probably upgrade to a spall fan. And there's really I don't know. There's there's a lot of stuff up there. And we don't have very much room, but if we can make the AC work on this thing, we're going to have a really happy customer you know, living in Florida. Hell, even here in Texas, it gets sticky enough. So that's where we're at. Let me get these wheels on and thing back down on the ground. I have not driven the car since I've changed all the brakes, redid all of the suspension in the rear. If you guys remember, we had coilover, uh, Viking coilovers in the rear, and now We've gone back to coil spring. We had solid control arms with um, solid bushings and everything else. So we've upgraded the arms. We've got quad shocks now that clear our wheels and Ford Motorsport C-Spring. 
and this guy is cut down aggressively. And this is what, again, I showed it on the video. See the spring, the weight is off the differential. The spring is seated and not going anywhere. So I know people talk a lot of shit about cutting coils. You can cut coils if you can achieve this. And the way that I've achieved this is by running a shorter Beltec shock that doesn't extend down as far as factory. And also by adding the quad shock because this together is keeping the diff higher up. It's not allowing the diff to extend as far down as it would if it was on factory components, which ultimately is putting more pressure on this coil spring. So keep that in mind, guys. All right, enough rambling. I think I've got you guys up to date enough. Um, there are some final cleanup items to do. I do uh, wanna show you guys what's going on in the trunk here because uh, we did some kill mat, JBL, base pro hub sub, and just some cleanup in general. So let's get to it. All right, so the car's back down on the ground. See the trunk here, I need to detail things up and finish with the clips and everything else. But if you look under here, we've got another JBL Base Pro Hub and still need to finish up some of the wiring, but it's all in there. We got kill mat all in the spare tire wall here. So all that's good to go. And I've already run new speakers in the back. And if you guys might have remembered, I don't know if I put it in videos or not, I put like generic speakers in here and then the decision was made to actually upgrade all the speakers. The door panels are gonna come off, which they need to come off anyways because of the cheapo LMR. I think NPD sells them too. Um, they're the cheaper door lock actuators. I didn't put Dormans in here, so I'm gonna get those swapped over to the ones that I know that are gonna last. And other than that, figure out some gauge placement. So we can take you sneak peek in here. I got to bolt the shifter back on because the transmission, you know, we had to change out that front plate so we can get the console all buttoned up together there. And then of course, kick panels are still out, but the rear seat is now installed. The matching Corbo rear cloth to match the fronts here. So we're in pretty good shape to get this car wrapped up. So now the car is actually back down on the ground. I want to point out this little relay here. This is a timed relay that I've wired in. So when the ignition's on, it takes about 30 seconds before this relay is going to kick on. Oh yeah, and don't mind, uh, there's a fender bolt missing here. I am probably going to upgrade them all to the Serbinator style. So for anybody who picked up on that, don't worry. Um, so yeah, so this relay kicks on the electric power steering pump about 20 to 30 seconds after this sees 12 volts. So what that does is it makes sure that the pump isn't running when you're trying to crank and start the motor because then you'd just be drawing so much power that is completely unnecessary. So we've got that. I've got another one of my 80 amp inline breakers right here. And that is going to the main power on the pump that's down in there. So let me show you guys the proof of concept now. See the ignition's forward. If we wait for it. Light is green. And our pump is running. So that's pretty much the concept, guys. Ignition off, pump is off. So I am going to see, I'm going to bolt the shifter on here, um, get that taken care of up in the front. And we'll see if this car is going to be able to move and stop on its own. So I was editing up the video on th this video with the twin turbo car. Come to realize that the last moment when I was actually starting the car up, I accidentally had the camera set to time-lapse mode, which means none of that footage had audio and everything was going a million miles a minute. So I'll go ahead now, I'll start it up. I'll show you guys how well it starts actually now on the fresh E85. 
and also the you'll hear the electric power steering pump cycle on and I need to pull it out so that we can get the average Fox out of here because this car is now done and we're going to be getting Jerry's 93 coyote swap on the lift so we can focus on some of the stuff underneath the car but we need to get this out so we can play musical cars That shit stank. 